Hi everyone, Blaine here, and uh, today I'm going to show you a quick video on how to configure X-Plane and set camera angles. Uh, I cover this a little bit in my Zebo mod installation video, uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how to do it in any airplane. Uh, we are going to use the Zebo mod uh, because that's my preferred aircraft, but you can do this in any aircraft. So initially, when you load into X-Plane, you're going to uh, be on the main menu, and you're going to have a bunch of selections. Uh, settings obviously allows you to change uh, settings in the game, such as graphics, audio. Uh, things like that. Flight school is the built-in uh, training school on how to do rudimentary things in aircraft. Loading a saved flight obviously loads a previous flight you did. Um, however, because of the amount of complexity and intricacy of aircraft and their systems, loading a saved flight will seldom have everything set the way you wanted. Uh, so I seldom use that. And then finally, new flight. So that's what we're going to select. So when you get to here, you'll be able to see the aircraft that you have. Uh, some aircraft you'll see on my page, uh, and you won't have them, and that's normal because I have payware aircraft. Uh, for example, at the top, I have the SSG Boeing 747 freighter because I've paid for that. Uh, if you don't have a payware aircraft, that's fine. You can look at getting one when you feel uh, confident enough to do so. Uh, for the purposes of this video, when I do my actual demonstration, I'm going to use the Zebo mod uh, because that's the aircraft that I prefer. But you can set camera angles and configure this uh, in any aircraft. So let's begin. As you can see here, we have a selection of aircraft which we can choose from, uh, whether that's uh, a jetliner, whether that's a prop plane, whether that's a dual engine aircraft, it's entirely up to you. So how you configure this is you basically select the aircraft that you'd like to use. Right now, we have the Zebo one selected, so that's fine. If you were to go to customize, you would customize settings on that aircraft. So you can choose uh, what uh, library you want to have, uh, if there are libraries that come with it. You can hit this star and it will make it uh, a favorite so it appears at the top. Uh, you can choose to start with the engines running. You can choose to have your weight, fuel, and balance added. So if you want to have the plane with already weight loaded and fuel loaded, you can drag these slider bars and that will do that. Or you can start with nothing and then you can load the fuel and weight yourself. If you go to failures, you have the ability to set failures for the aircraft, such as will I have my landing gear uh, working all the time, or will I have it set to something different? For example, if I go to start, my starter I have set to always working, but you can have it set to go to uh, you know, set mean time failure, which would basically be the idea of, you know, you have to get an oil change in your car every so often, and that's regular maintenance. Um, if you have something set to mean time failure, it means that the general accepted time of, uh, of, of life cycle for that part will function until it fails. Personally, for me, I have everything set to always working, just because that's what I have it set to. That's me, though. So, uh, we're going to get out of this. And then what we can do is we can choose our location and our weather settings. So if you go to the location setting here, you can choose the aircraft or the uh, the airfield you'd like. Um, for the purposes of this video, we'll just use Los Angeles International. If we go to the top where it says customize, that will let us choose where on the airfield we want we want to be. Uh, and if you scroll in, you can zoom in to see different parts of the airfield. So currently, I have it set at gate 25. However, if you wanted to have it set somewhere else, you would just select one of the blips and then the plane would move there. Um, if you wanted to uh, have it set to do an approach, for example, uh, or start on a runway, you would just select the edge of a runway. And now the plane will spawn at the edge of runway 07 right. If you wanted to do practicing on approaches, you would select the menu that says on runway, and then you can either select a 3 nautical mile or 10 nautical mile approach, and then you would hit confirm. So for me, I want to start on the ramp for this video. So I'm going to have that gate selected, and I'm going to hit confirm. And then the weather, I use a weather add-on um, called uh, NOAA, and uh, that's I believe the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, um, and, and then that pulls weather data every uh, 15 minutes from the internet. Uh, for the time, you can either choose to set it uh, to real time or you can set it to whatever you want. 
In terms of configuring weather, you can have it set to manually configured, which is I don't want to have, I want to have weather, I want to have clouds here, I want to have rain here, uh, or you can do what's called match real world conditions, in which case for that specific location it will pull the actual weather. And then for your time, you can hit customize and you can select real world time and it will go to the actual time of that local time, or you can enter whatever time you'd want and date. So we're going to start the flight now and load into the simulation. So we've loaded into the aircraft and we're in uh, cold and dark settings, which is basically the aircraft is unpowered and uh, the default camera view that it loads into is kind of the pilot in command seat. Now you can set camera angles to whatever view you'd like using your number pad and I'm going to explain how to do that in a moment. For right now though, if you're not used to um, setting camera angles or you don't really know how to navigate the, uh, the flight deck, I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you use your four arrow keys on your keyboard, left, right, up and down, that will enable you to move around the aircraft. So if you if you use your right arrow key and you hold it down, you can see that we're moving to the right. If you hold down the down arrow, you can see we're moving down. Essentially, any use of those keys or in conjunction up and down will make you go at whatever angle or direction you'd like to. Now, if you wanted to increase the distance you travel by going faster than that, you can press shift and you can hold the up arrow and it will move it faster. Or you could hold the left arrow or the right arrow and it will move you across faster. It's entirely up to you. Now, if you wanted to zoom in, you would need to depress the period key and that will make you zoom in. If you wanted to zoom out, you would simply depress the, uh, the comma key. And again, I'm moving fast here because I have the shift key depressed. If you didn't have that depressed, then you'd move in slower. So, now that you know how to move around the flight deck, let's set some camera angles. So the first thing you want to do is you want to you want to start in a kind of a basic position. So you would take your mouse and you would go up to the top and you'd go to view and you'd want to start with change and internal and you'd want to have it selected to forward with 3D panel. This will basically reset your position. Now to change your position and set a camera angle you would basically determine the angle you want and then you would hold down the control the control key and you would press a number on your keypad. Because there's uh, 10 keys on your number pad, you can have 10 distinct views. So for me, I have them set up in a very particular way. And at the conclusion of this video, I'm going to actually have a link with the actual camera angles that I use in a document so you can see. So for me, my first view that I have is my pilot in command view. So that's basically me in the left seat. Now, because all of my angles are already set, I'm not going to set them again, but I'm going to show you what they are and I'm going to name them. So my first one is pilot in command. So for me, it's this position. I can see all of the nav displays, I can see most of the MCP, and I'm able to see out the window. So this is the view that I use most often and it's called the pilot in command view. And I use control 4 for that one. The next one I use is the co-pilot window. So I can see out of the co-pilot window. The reason why I don't have it set on my pilot window is because if I need to I can just quickly turn because we don't have unlimited amount of keys uh, and camera angles unless you get uh, a third party software like X camera which I personally don't want to use. So my my captain, sorry, my co-pilot view is control 6. Now if you wanted to switch between both of these angles you would simply hit the opposite key. So if I hit 4 on my numpad it takes me back to that camera angle. If I hit 4 again it takes me back to the co-pilot window. So it's really easy once you have those set and you've remembered what they do to have them uh, easy to get you around the cockpit. Continuing inside, because Zeebo uh, has added the tablet, I have a camera angle set on the tablet because I use it a lot so that I can quickly flip back and, and get around it. Um, other camera views that I have, sorry, the Zeebo tablet I have set to control 5. Uh, and then the other views I have are the FMC, the overhead panel, the MCP, and the radio panel. So my FMC is control zero, 
and that basically shows the flight management computer because I spend a lot of time looking at this and so it's it's really good to have it in my my field of view if I wanted to go to the overhead panel I would hit control uh, control one and then it takes me to my overhead panel and I can see everything that I need to if I wanted to go to the MCP I would hit control two and that takes me to the to the uh, mode control panel uh, and also I can see all of my displays in the bottom which is also important finally I have the radio panel which I use to configure for obviously radio frequencies ILS alignment and TCAS and I have that set to control three and that's how I'm able to navigate the aircraft rather quickly now for external views um, I have a bunch set as well so before we actually set those we have to get outside the aircraft so we would go back to the drop down menu and we would select view and then we would go to change external and we would hit chase and this shows directly behind the aircraft now if you take your mouse and you hold down the right mouse button and then move you can actually move up down side to side and you can move around however you'd want and then the same thing happens before you choose the angle you want and then you you apply it to a control key on your numpad so for me control 8 is my chase and I have it set up so that I'm behind the aircraft but I'm a bit above it so I can see what's going on around me my control 7 key is my left wing looking from the back so that's what it looks like and then the control 9 is the front fuselage and the roof of the aircraft because that's a view that I personally like to look at but you could have it set up however you wanted uh, if you wanted to do you know one of the uh, of one of the wing instead of you know this view again you'd hold down shift and you'd hit the period to zoom in or if you wanted to zoom out you'd hit down shift and you'd hit the comma button and then if you wanted to change the angle you would simply use your right mouse button and then you would have it however you'd like and then once you've determined the angle you want you then hit control and select a key that you'd like to use and that's basically it so when you're actually using these camera views it makes it a lot easier to get around the aircraft and I'll give you an example of that so if we go back into the aircraft and we wanted to turn this on we wanted to turn the, the aircraft on uh, and and hop around the uh, the flight deck this is what it would look like we'd start on the overhead panel and we go to the battery and then we'd confirm standby powers on and then we would go to the Zebo tablet and we would go to ground services we would connect the GPU and then back to the overhead panel and then now ground power is on and then if we go back to the pilot in command view we can now see that the aircraft is powered on I was able to do all of that because of the key binding set and the camera angle set to be able to jump around the aircraft um, that's a basic you know tutorial of how to set angles and and walk around or look around the uh, the uh, flight deck if you wanted to do something more uh, in terms of configuring you would just simply need to check the settings out up here for example if you wanted to configure plugins uh, or if you wanted to change things related to your flight uh, or if you even wanted to use some of the other angles that come uh, in here you can also do that too for example if you went to circle it would show it from the side and then you could simply set that angle if you so choose and then other than that the only thing you'd want to set up are your settings so if you go to the uh, the picture of the three sliders here this basically sets up other things in X-Plane for example if you go to general you can set your language you can set if you're simulating hypoxia things like that if you go to graphics you can set how your graphics are, are going to be configured and you're going to probably spend a fair amount of time in the graphics menu tweaking the uh, the simulation to be able to provide good FPS without compromising um, you know without compromising all of the performance and one thing I would like to note with this is I strongly encourage you to have the visual effects set to maximum or at least HDR because if you don't have them set to that if you're doing anything at night it will be very difficult to see outside the aircraft uh, and then from there you would go to your joysticks and you would configure them and basically how you do this is you select an axis and then you you start moving it and it will ask you to calibrate it so if I do this I'm moving my throttle one and how I would configure that would be selecting this and then 
moving it until it calibrates. I'm not going to do a video on how to calibrate things because I have a bunch of funky settings, uh, but you can find plenty of those on there. One I'd really recommend to look at in terms of actually configuring uh, your your secondary uh, pieces such as your throttle or your yoke is uh, is a video by Cat Strader. Uh, he's a well-known simulator and he is he's fantastic at what he does. I really like watching him. And then your keyboard if you wanted to have bind set up uh, like I do. Most of my functions on my plane are set up through binds. Uh, but that essentially is how you uh, configure the plane and how you set camera angles. And so uh, I hope you set them up and they look great. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Be sure to hit subscribe to be notified when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching.